Okay. Let's start with any feedback and we'll take it from there. Um, I think it's been very concise. I think 20 minutes is long enough with all the information that you give us. Um, for me personally, anyway, the amount of uh, information that I can take in. Okay. Uh, 30 minutes is a little bit long. Yes. I think 15, 20 minutes is a good amount of time. Okay. And has it been easier to deliver them on YouTube rather than in your inbox? Oh, much downloads? easier, yeah. Yeah, because you just click the link and it takes you straight yeah. to the video. I'm YouTube. really happy with the new YouTube links. Thank you. It makes things easier. Okay, Why great. Okay. Yeah. So those would be live probably for the duration of the course. But at any point, if you're missing a module, I can send it to you. And I'll try and stick to 20 minutes. And if it's longer, you know, we'll split them into two um, so that it's not too much because I think a lot of people are overwhelmed, busy, although at home stay, busy doing quite a lot of things. Yeah, it seems to be that way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unbox, people. Any questions? Um, so with the um, the the chart where you do all the things in your life, like family, career, yeah. charity. Yeah. So the purpose of that is to see where you're lacking. Exactly. If you look at something abstract in a tangible way, I'm just making you a drawing. I call it the web of life, but equally it can be a circle. Can you see that? So if you yeah, apply life that. like that, the least yeah. satisfied is here. The most yeah. satisfied is here. And yeah. then you start by putting whatever, your spiritual life, finances, um, you know, relationship, physical fitness, whatever aspects that are really important you know, family, friends, um, hobbies are very important and interests, creativity. And then you just, mm -hmm. abstract, in an abstract way, you ask yourself from the heart, of course, don't think about it. You know, how happy am I or, you know, how happy am I with my spiritual routine? Maybe here. Mm -hmm. How happy am I with my finances? And then with my relationships and then fitness. Well, I would put mine here. And then maybe we would ask about work and, and um, job or career. Um, so I've lumped them together because they're very similar. You know, work, job, career, things like that. And then let's say one point here. Let's say one point here. And then you join the points. And this looks like an amoeba shape. Yeah. So that's my shape. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. you really want is to get an overall more of a circle than an yeah. amoeba or than a star. So what does that so tell I... me? That tells me, can I, I will just finish this, Katrina. So that tells me this is my lowest point. Well, actually, this is my lowest point. And these two are really high. So maybe I'm paying too much attention to these two aspects of my life. If I were to bring them down a little bit, then I would have more time for my fitness, more time for my relationships, and then I would start to kind of regulate all the aspects together. So the point is that your brain remembers shapes when you see them. So instead of analyzing and moving into a program that is not working for you, it makes it a lot easier to look at it that way, and then you'd remember, maybe I'm spending too much time doing this. Well, if I spend less time here, then I can dedicate more time in another area and over a period of time it's very important not to put any pressure on yourselves remember the pendulum effect so if you go gently gradually and slowly you will be met with less resistance so you are more likely to make progress if you don't push yourself so the first step is awareness the second step is allow your brain to register your goal where you want to go the third step, what we're doing here, is you're facing your weaknesses. 
so that you know what you need to work on. And if you don't, your subconscious will know once you see this picture. Does that make sense? Thank you, yes. It's kind of like a basic tool in life coaching, but I took it a bit further in Tools for Life so that you can move a little bit further. And if you look at your amoeba or star, you can start uh, doing two things. The first thing is once you make your diagram and maybe choose two colors. So the one thing you can say, what do I need to do in order to bring this to balance? And then the next question to ask is, what do I need to stop doing to bring this into balance? So for each point, you know, like if these are too much, you can ask yourself, what can I, what do I need to stop doing so that I can direct more of my energy in another aspect? And if an aspect is low, you can ask yourself, what can I do in order to enhance that area of my life? So can you think, have you done the exercise? Do you have an area which is lower than any other area? Maybe start with three or two. That's more than enough. If it were me, I'd start with the lowest. But if you sense you're resisting it, then start with your second or third lowest, you know, so that you're not so overwhelmed. But the point is start. <laughs> because once you start, you'll get encouraged and you won't feel it's a big issue to, to continue to unbox. So from everyone here, can you think of an area that is really low score in, in your web of life? Exercise is definitely, um, you know, exercising is a, is a low and okay. I'm kind of like pushing a bit myself. Um, okay. That's one point. The second point was uh, being more creative. Okay. Finally, to, today I managed to start painting, which was like a big miracle. Okay. So. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, let's give her a thumbs up. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. <laughs> or you can do a thumbs up in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But, but it's good because the point is you started painting. And I hope that you don't judge yourself when you're painting, that you just do it for the joy of it. Because while you're doing it, you're actually getting aligned, your heart is opening up because it's something that you enjoy doing. The exercise thing, and I know, Vesvan, I know that you do a lot of yoga. Just ask yourself, what can I start doing? Just one thing, um, even if it's just breathing, you know, what can you do in terms of exercise? One thing that you can start today without getting overwhelmed yeah and uh, breathing is uh very important i, I and i do that uh, okay. i guess i should mention the second thing is what i do now is in order not to feel pressure i just put music and i start dancing you know Excellent. casually and just let myself gentle be gentle with my body with Good. pleasure you know listening to music yeah remember that I'm, of um, dangling the carrot so whenever you meet with resistance dangle a carrot an incentive uh, a reward for yourself because we work a lot better when we dangle a reward than we, we push ourselves pushing for me doesn't work but creating an incentive or having it inside really does but i'm still hard on myself sahar in a way that it's like it's not enough you're not doing enough this is not enough and i'm trying to put that voice down but it's i understand that it's difficult don't try um my my theory about trying is if you're trying you're not doing it so I want to remind everyone, if you haven't heard this before, um, I want to share a little thing. When you get home, for example, pre-COVID, and it's dark, and you want to switch the lights on, do you sit and analyze, I'm finding it difficult, should I switch the light on, or do you actually take an action? <laughs> yes, take okay. the action. So same thing, so no trying. Trying needs to go from the dictionary, because when you keep saying, I'm trying, I'm trying, you're actually programming your subconscious consciously that you are forever trying and this is difficult and I cannot do it. When we get into the module about the mind, we talk about the thought process and how it's formed. And it's formed by having little thoughts that kind of conglomerate together and, and form a constellation. So you want to dismantle that. And one way of dismantling it is by doing it consciously. So don't say I'm trying. If you catch yourself like, blah, 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 just go here, touch your forehead and say, shut up. 
like really be quiet shut up and then <laughs> that's the first thing the second step is you get up and you do something different you switch the music on you go make a cup of tea whatever it is to interrupt that thought process that keeps sabotaging your intentions so change for me really is two steps you know catch it and then change it get up and do something else when you manage to do that for a period of time or repetitively three times in a row or for a period of how many days it starts to become a habit and if you control your mind that you really stop it from going down the rabbit hole you have begun to be in charge of your life so remember what i said in the videos consciousness can only change consciously you need to be aware of your patterns just lovingly observe yourself and if you catch yourself going into that self-sabotage mode or analysis, just like say, Shh, you know, stop it. And I normally like, I would do this, you know, like take that piece of paper with the thought on it and just crumble it and throw it away. It's just a movement that asserts to me, okay, I'm not going to think like that. And I would tell myself two things. I choose to think differently and I choose to feel differently because thoughts and emotions are very much interlinked. So when you keep affirming to yourself, I choose to think differently, I choose to feel differently, your mind knows or your brain knows that you are in control, not your mind. And the two are different, but I will talk about that in the module about the mind. So notice it, stop it, have a movement you know, that goes with it because then we're using all different parts of the brain. Get up, do something else, and tell yourself, maybe out loud, I, I like to talk to myself out loud because it goes in a lot faster. I choose to, come on. I choose to. Think differently. I choose think to. differently. Feel differently. So think I choose and to feel. feel. Differently. Yeah, yeah, because you wanna start kind of dismantling whatever negative emotions, negative belief system that you have. And these two affirmations have worked really wonders. And you do them like medicine. You do them at the time when you need them. You come up and you say, okay, stop it now. I choose to think differently. Think differently. And think differently. And think differently. And if you just start with this tool, the bigger things will get easier because now you know that you are in charge of what you're thinking about, not the other way. You don't pay attention to whatever your brain is saying. You tell your brain what you want to be done. So the brain should serve us, not the other way around. And if we start taking control of our mind, then you're on the first step of starting or beginning to manifest things for yourself. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Good question, Besma. You brought up something really useful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Anything else? Anyone else? Um, I guess uh, on on you know to to continue on this. It's um, I feel sometimes I'm like uh, with my mind. My yeah. mind is 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 like as if I'm. Tom and Jerry with my mind, you know, sometimes it, it likes to play tricks on me. It's like, you know, you have all the best intentions you want to start, start and then your mind sometimes, as you said, sabotage you between quotes or try to get back to the, uh, I don't know, basic, uh, most, uh, uh, the habit, basic habit, you know, in order to, to avoid that extra effort or that change. And I'm aware of that, and 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 it's 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 really uh, laborious work. Okay, I'm uh, I'm gonna stop you because yeah. you're overanalyzing. <laughs> so the analysis yeah. is not working. So you need to go stop it. Tell me what right. the symptoms are. The symptoms are, you know, I I I wake up in the morning and I'm like, okay, I should be doing, for example, um, the basic exercise, the okay. meditation, everything, and have the great resolution. Okay. So don't have resolutions. I don't have resolutions. I'm probably the only person amongst my friends who does not make resolutions at New Year because yeah. of the pendulum effect. And from experience, my resistance is so huge that I realized why am I banging my head against the wall? But when I take the pressure off, same thing with diet or whatever it is, um, and I go really gradually, I don't notice that I'm changing. And remember the reptilian brain? 
it doesn't feel threatened because nothing is different. I'm not saying, you know, I'm changing my routine to such an extent. So there's nothing to fear. So I engage brain one and then I move to brain two, which is emotional. What is my incentive for whatever, you know, exercising or dieting? And you think about it, you know, and you feel it in your body. You don't tell yourself because if you want to do any changes, it's like speaking to a child. You don't start pointing a finger and saying, you must do this because it's very good for you. It doesn't work. You need to engage the three brains. So small steps for change and then emotionally feel the end result of whatever goal you have. And if you keep feeling it rather than analyzing it to your body, it, to your consciousness, it becomes an experience. So you will replace the self-reproach by positive feelings of what am I going to gain or the end result. And then you move into the third gear, which is the human brain or the neocortex. And then you can, you know, get up as a human being and do it. That is one thing you can do. The other thing, because I experienced this particularly this weekend, I did not feel like doing anything. It's okay. You don't always have to be in control. Sometimes when we let go of control, we discover little gifts, things that we need to work through simply by staying with it. So instead of telling yourself, for example, that's my, you know, I need to get up and I need to exercise, ask yourself, what is it that I really like to do at this point? And it might be something else, but the something else will bring you joy, will put you in alignment, will make you feel better, and then you might be ready to take the step and get up and exercise. For example, I usually make a list of things to do in the morning, and I end up not doing them. But I do the same number of things that were not on the list. Sometimes I just go with it, you know, maybe the other things are more appropriate right now or more timely or more in alignment with where I want to go. So you need to remember the flexibility. You need to maintain the flexibility so that you can maintain being in alignment so long as you don't go out to an extreme. Right. Does that make sense? So yes. no, no self-beating. Um, feel, ask yourself, what is it that I really feel like doing and do that. And the second or the third step is like really feel, you know, how good would it be to do that? And then the time will come, your brain will kind of dissolve all the boundaries and then you might get up and do it two hours later rather than at the time that you push yourself to do it. Right. Stay, stay open. Maybe you will paint something amazing better than exercising and you'll make it feel really good and then you'll get up and you'll exercise and you'll do what you need to do. So you need to work with yourself, not against yourself. And I think the reason we do this is probably the way we were raised. You know, teachers, parents, you know, sit down and do your homework and do this before you watch television. So there is that programming in the back of our minds. And we think if we do that, if we point the finger, it works. But really, I've tried for so, like at least three decades and that does not work for me. Fear as an incentive does not work. Pushing hard does not work because you're going against the flow and who knows where the flow is. So you need to teach yourself to sense what is the best thing for me to do now and accept that. And when you look back, like what happened with me this week, when I looked back at my week, it's like, wow, I've done things that were on my list, believe me, for a year. I'm doing them now instead of doing what I've put on my list for this month. So that's okay. Wonderful. I'm, I'm very happy with it. It didn't happen in the order that I wanted, but it's okay. It got done. It's great. Thank you for asking that question. Brilliant. <laughs> this is my Easter mug. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. I love Easter. I love all sorts of new beginnings. And for me, symbolically, the egg and the chick coming out of the egg. So I'm hoping in homestay, it's a very good and new beginning for all of us. I hope so too. Yeah, yeah. Because I was pretty I think down about it the last two days. And then, you know, you sit with your feelings, you accept it, and then something new comes up. Good. Mm -hmm. Keep going, unboxers. <laughs> Thank you um, so much. Brilliant. Thank you, Katrina. I'm here so long as you have questions. It's, it's not a lecture. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> gathering to go through this.
and to give you an incentive to keep going on with the course and not to be afraid to face whatever it is you need to unbox. And I tell you something else I noticed about myself the last two days. Whatever irritates you or pushes your buttons most, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a big issue. Very often it's the small issue, especially when you are aware you've been practicing doing this like a, you know, like a Ferrari and it, you can go really fast and really far. A little pebble on the road can phew, throw you over. So don't ignore the small stuff and don't be afraid to face the small stuff because usually this small stuff can unblock a huge thing that is in your path. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it's not the exercise. Maybe it's not the creativity. Maybe it's just allowing yourself to accept yourself unconditionally, you know, to be, um, instead of trying to perfect things and change them and measure your performance according to somebody else's or, you know, what society and people tell us we must do this. I think we need to find our must by ourselves. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to us individually and we're not going to stick to it. Yeah. So release judgment and just sit with your, you know, like, oh, I don't feel like doing it. It's okay. Sit with it. Sit with that feeling like you would with a child. Comfort yourself and just say, I'm sorry I ignored you. I'm sorry I ignored how you feel. I'm sorry I always pushed you to do what I thought was best for you. And just sit there really with that feeling. I, I talk to feelings like a consciousness. You know, I imagine talking to my inner child or whatever it is. And then after a while, sometimes I get answers, sometimes I don't. But after a while, the resistance goes. And then I get up and I do what I need to do. So listen to yourself is more important than pushing yourself. Because the whole point is also to find your inner guidance. And if you're always telling yourself, do this, do that, do this, then you're not listening to your body, to your feeling. You're not observing the negative thoughts or um, patterns that are going on in your mind. So how can you unbox them if you don't know what they are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So remember that, write it down. Always ask yourself, what is it showing me? And I think if you ask a different question, you'll get a different answer. Mm. Or what do I need to do now instead of this? You know, what does my body feel like it? What does my heart feel like it? Forget the mind. Whenever you get stuck, lose your brain. Because there are more nerve centers here in the heart that will guide you <laughs> rather than listening to an old program that probably needs updating. So when I'm confused, I cut this off, I listen to my heart, or I literally sleep on it and see what dream I wake up with. I use my dreams quite a lot. I mean, I wouldn't have managed life without working with my dreams, which I started back in 1992. I journal, I write them down, I ask questions, I direct my dreams, and if everything else fails, I go back to dreaming, and somehow the answer becomes clear because you're working with the unconscious and you're making it conscious. Thank do you, you do any of you use your dreams that way? Or can you remember yeah. a dream that was like <gasps> blew your mind and made you aware of something? Yeah, I dream a lot, but um do you write them down, Katrina? Uh, no. I think it might be a good idea if you start because very often they feel like, oh, it's just a silly dream, but they're not really. They have a huge message within them. And yeah, you no. only discover that later on, you know? Mm. Alia, how are you doing? Any questions? How do you feel? Uh, I've I've been working on the exercises and I'm quite happy with that and okay. the whole uh, course flow. Again, not to overanalyze, but I have a bit an off track um, uh, thought. H how often and, and until when do we still keep looking forward to evolving and when are we? You don't. <laughs> to evolve into what, did I, what did I just say? Take yeah. the pressure off and just be loving and be kind to yourself. And when you look back, you'll begin to realize, oh, I've moved from that point. So everyone is different. You know, it's like cars and engine. Every car is different, every engine is different. It all depends on your development so far in this life, on the development of your mind, you know, whatever, your background, your culture, how you grew up, la 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 la. So just start from now. 
yeah. you know, okay. and start yeah. with yeah. the web of life and start with things that interest you that you can begin with immediately, like observing the thought, uh, telling yourself, I choose to think, I choose to feel. Yeah. Because how can you compare your own growth? Your own growth is an individual path. It's an individual journey. So, so who are you going to compare it to? It, it's not like a class and you're going to take an exam. The only, yeah. the only point of reference maybe is the ease of flow in your life. So are things happening? Is it moving? Am I paying attention? And if not, this is when you stop and say, okay, what dimension am I blocked in? And then you go back to the beginning, you do your life circle, you do the two extremes, remember finding balance, you see yeah, where yeah. are you wasting the energy, you're, you're swinging between, oh, it tells me we have 10 minutes and we're going to run out of time. Wow, time went really quickly. So, <laughs> so that's when you know yeah. how you're doing, but please don't ever compare yourself to anyone else. I mean, I used to have clients in England and especially women, and you know, they would walk in and we'd say, oh, I'm, I'm really spiritual and aware, and you know, my husband isn't. And I said, how do you know that? She says, oh, I go to yoga and retreats, and he doesn't want to come with me. And I, that is not a comparison. And I had another lady who said, oh, I'm more spiritual and aware than my other girlfriends, you know, because I, I, I knew the whole group. Um, yeah. And I said, how do you know that? You know, I'm like, oh, I do more retreats or something. Actually, when you are aware, you don't need to do all these things because you have a good connection with yourself you spend time with yourself it's more important to know how to drive your own car than to compare driving with someone else okay yeah right good um sahar just one thing i'm, I'm sure. noticing I, I guess the importance of breathing uh you know uh, sometimes i you know i do these exercises you know that uh, we've done and uh, it does make a big difference that sometimes does. when i forget about them and then i i finally become conscious of them and i do take that deep breath and yeah. inhale and exhale and connect yeah. it, it does as if i i enter into meditation just yeah. by breathing absolutely and connect. correct and it's amazing for me breath is life life is breath if you can breathe well you're connected with life and i noticed this actually when i had a client many many years ago and he said um you know are you suffering from like are you irritable impatient or whatever and i said yes and he said you're a shallow breather i'm like what and then i started paying attention to breathing um, all the time, you know, like if you catch yourself during the day, take a deep breath. And for me, breathing and air has a lot of meaning, a lot of metaphors, because air is the thing that is connecting all of us, especially now, <laughs> isn't it? You yeah. know? So it, it is life is breath and breath is life. So as long as you can breathe, you know, you can even control the brain wave. Uh, I wanted to say the wavelength of your brain, you can calm the mind. When the mind calms, it really expands. You learn better, you improve memory, you get more oxygen. So yes, I agree with you. Um, and I need, and thank you for reminding us, because I need to remind myself um, to just sit and breathe. You know, like sometimes a family member would walk in, are you meditating? Okay, I'm, I'm meditating, but I'm really just breathing rather than just meditating. So breathing by itself is very important or right. a few, few deep breaths before you go to bed and like your mind will start going mm, and then you know and then you'd fall asleep more easily so yeah sure. thank you Basma yeah, yeah and uh, I think now more than any other point in time we really appreciate clean air <laughs> you know? yes it's really nice to be able to um to breathe isn't it absolutely yes yeah Good, thank you for that. Any other questions, anyone? I think we look forward for next week's uh, sessions. It's been really interesting. Fantastic. I look and forward I, to it every day. And I think we'll probably do it on a Sunday, if it's all right with everyone. But yeah. maybe earlier, maybe around five. 
Um, I don't know, but let me know because we have people from the States, we have people from Japan, and it's a little bit difficult to get the right time in between. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so just send me an email, let me know what's best for you. And we'll see the majority and we'll go with them. There's also a group within this group, um, a corporate group from the same company. So they're having their session tomorrow, uh, their live Q&A, because today they're celebrating Easter. But it doesn't matter. I'm happy to be with you and I'm happy to also create another session next week if need be. But I think Sunday is a good day. Um, you yeah. know, maybe when things are calmer, quieter, then we can pay attention to unboxing homestay. Great. Yes, thank you. Yep. Okay. Anything, any other question before we sign off? When are we looking at our pouch? Is yeah. What's, up, what's your question when you're looking at it? And then? Uh, are we looking to into our pouch this week or not this week? You, you can do so at the end of a week. Yeah. And okay. then, you know, what I used to do is when you open whatever you were worried about, you might feel, oh, I'm not worried about this anymore, you know? So count mm -hmm. them, count them first of all. You might have yeah. 50. I had, I remember I had 52 or, or 49, something like that. And then the next week there were less, less. So two things. I saw that whatever I was wasting time worrying about did not exist by the end of the week. So that showed me how much energy I wasted. And the other okay. thing is I learned that some things get sorted if you move out of the way. So instead of having 52 or 49, they really came down. And now I would have two or three things, but I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yes. You know? So you're That's seeing good, yeah. your own progress. Do you see what I mean? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's really to do two things, to see the number of, of concerns that were on your mind and the extent of worry, you know, how much energy you wasted um, um, worrying about just something. By w being, yeah, just by being worried about it and just running the thought in your mind, now it's written down uh, yeah. automatically, half of the burden is off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Anything else, anyone? All good? All unboxed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until next week. Then, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much and have a very good Thank weekend you. and happy Thank you for your time. We really Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you all. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.